Yo, what's up everybody? It's International Master Daniel Wrench. We're back today on Chess.com's YouTube channel to bring you another Chess Openings How to Play video lecture. Today we're going to talk about both the Dragon, the Mainline Dragon, and the Accelerated Dragon. We're going to change the, uh, the claim of these videos from two-minute opening drills to something maybe around five or even under ten-minute opening drills as being our goal because, let's be honest, I'm not that good to cover two openings in under two minutes um, as uh, fast as I'd like to talk. And I uh, don't think that would be very enjoyable for all of you as well. So um, from now on, you're going to see five-minute opening drills. I'm surrendering my, uh, my fast-talking flag to make these videos a little bit more educational and a little more entertaining and uh, all around just a, a good old time, fun family time. So let's do this. Um, the, the dragon, the main purpose of the dragon is to essentially fee and kettle this bishop along the long diagonal A1, H8. Okay, and on that diagonal, you'll find the bishop has uh, an extremely dangerous purpose. Not only does it put pressure on the central dark squares, but because black's play in the Sicilian is always involving natural queenside play, as we talked about even in the night orf, a bishop being placed along this diagonal exerting pressure on all these critical squares can be quite the dangerous beast over there, a fire-breathing dragon, as has been called um, uh, by many players. So the main purpose of the dragon, whether it's the accelerated or the main line, is to put your dark squared bishop again, the f8 bishop along the long dark square diagonal. There are two ways black can, it, can reach the dragon, and we're going to flip the board around so that you can focus on black's move order here. To start with the accelerated, we would play two knight to c6, and after d4 takes, takes, g6, we're heading toward a position where black would like to put this bishop along this diagonal, again putting pressure on the dark squares. The reason why black would play this move order with two knight to c6, as opposed to playing the move order with 2d6 is so that at some point he might be able to move the pawn from d7 to d5 in one move. One example of that would be that in a mainline accelerated dragon, if white chooses to develop naturally as he does in many open Sicilians, black has the opportunity to play for d5 in one move as opposed to playing from d6 to d5 black has saved a tempo and has the ability to advance in the center playing d5 in one move d5 is when it can be played tactically when, when it when it works when it's safe to play is considered an equalizing move in many sicilians as it opens the center and immediately brings more built more black pieces into the critical area of the board also it tends to bring more pieces to help this fire breathing dragon exert pressure on these uh, these pieces in the center so d5 is a move that black often strives for in many Sicilians and so one of the main ideas behind the accelerated that a lot of people just don't understand they don't know why someone might play a different move order is 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 that right there is that black would like to achieve d5 in one move rather than two if possible so by playing knight to c6 and accelerating the development of this bishop black has the potential at some point to play for d5 in one move rather than two we're going to come back to this concept in just a second because what I'd like to point out here is that if you if you wanted to summarize the one disadvantage behind playing the accelerated dragon move order, it would be that the lack of pressure black exerts immediately on this pawn allows white a developing option that is not possible in a mainline dragon move order. That is the Meroxy bind. After the move c4, what white has done is use this opportunity, use this opportunity where black did not put pressure on the pawn in the center to permanently prevent the move d5. In doing so, he slightly weakened his dark squares white has. White has slightly weakened the dark squares by advancing both these pawns to light squares. However, the extra space that white has in this position, developing this knight out behind the c pawn rather than in front of it, allows white a much better control over the critical light squares in the center. This theme is critical and it's something that really defines the accelerated dragon, as that when you play two knight to c6, you are taking the risk of accelerating the development of this bishop, hoping to exert pressure faster in the center, and potentially playing d5 in one move rather than two. But in doing so, you are allowing white the option to play c4, which is known as the Meroxy bind, and a mainline choice for white in the Accelerated Dragon. So why does the move order with 2d6 prevent 
the Meroxy bind, whereas two knight to c6 doesn't? Well, the main idea is that when you play the move d6, you're, you are preparing to bring this knight out to f6 more quickly to exert pressure on white center. And it, by playing d6, you provide a protection to the c5 square, therefore avoiding white's option of potentially attacking this knight. As an example, if someone confused their move orders and decided to play an accelerated move order, and then combine that, combine this accelerated move order with, with a mainline move order, basically playing knight f6 before they've chosen to play d6 in the center, one of the main issues with that is that white will capture on c6 and play the move e5, and this knight has nowhere to go but back home, really, in, as the option of coming to d5 is a pawn sacrifice that white would be more than happy to take as this move order allows white immediate pressure on the light squares, forcing e6, leaving black with a crippled, dark squared outpost color complex, essentially a weak square complex that he can never undo. So the move order with the accelerated version with 2 knight to c6 is designed to complete development on the king side and only later on try to get d5 in one move rather than two, though in some cases they will not get it and they will have to concede to d6 as the Meroxy bind being an example of that, where white simply prevents d5 so black will end up making the concession and simply settling on d6. Whereas when you play the two d6 move order, by creating a, this, this protection for the knight on f6, avoiding tricks with e5, you, you're able to put immediate pressure on the center. Therefore, white simply does not have time to play c4 and try for a Meroxy bind as this pawn is just hanging. So you see that if we were to summarize in a very simple manner, the main, main difference and the main difference in terms of purpose behind the accelerated and the mainline dragon, it would be that the accelerated dragon has one particular goal in mind, which is to play d5 in one move rather than two if the opportunity should arise. The main disadvantage of the, of the accelerated move order would be that it allows the Meroxy bind, a space advantage for white if he chooses to grab it. The mainline move order concedes this idea of trying to play for d5 in one move, but in doing so allows a more aggressive development for black on the king side, putting pressure on the e4 pawn, and therefore not allowing white even the option to play for the Meroxy bind, as this move knight to c3 is deemed as the best move to defend the e4 pawn right away. Quickly, let's talk about the, the mainline versions and actually give you some theory that can happen in each one of these Sicilians. In the mainline accelerator version, we have two main move orders that can take place. We've already alluded to both. One being the Meroxy bind. And after c4, bishop g7, bishop e3, black attacks e4, white defends e4, black can castle. And after a natural developing move for white, this move is possible, this move is possible, queen d2 is possible. You will often see black play d6. And now, because of the lack of space he has in the center, he will concede to make this trade on d4, freeing up this e6 square for his bishop, as otherwise it would be taken, and continue to put pressure against the overextended c4 pawn with ideas such as bringing rooks to the c file and perhaps developing a minority attack on the queen side. To give you one summary of a classical plan in the accelerated dragon, Meroxy Bind. If white should choose to play the mainline move order rather than a Meroxy bind, black does have the advantage of, of potentially getting d5 here in one move, so white will often choose this bishop c4 development, followed by retreating the bishop to b3 to avoid tactical tricks, and eventually playing the move f3 as it avoids this shot with knight to g4, potentially eliminating a key dark square bishop. This position would be a mainline reached via the accelerated move order. After 2d6, White can play for either two main ways to two main ways to approach this position. White can play for a Yugoslav attack, which involves creating this pawn structure here as a means to eventually develop a pawn storm on the king side, and potentially either castle long on move nine, accelerating this attack right away without wasting developing moves, but in turn potentially allowing the d5 break we've alluded to or play bishop to c4 first, transposing into a position that could also have been reached through that accelerated move where we just showed you, and eventually either castling short, 
and playing a classical type of game or casting long and developing a Yugoslav attack. The last version that white has the option to play against the dragon would be a classical without the development of the dark square bishop first. Oftentimes in these cases white will voluntarily retreat this knight to b3, unleashing the queen's open file so as to prevent the move d5 for all time and space, and slowly try to develop an, an attack on the king's side with the advance of the f-pawn. Thank you for watching this summary of both the mainline dragon and the accelerator dragon. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you around on chess.com.